Alaskans right now is a continuing winter. Another biggie being predicted for midweek. 100 million people are going to be affected by this as it comes out of the Rockies and moves into Texas during the day on Tuesday. And north of the track of the storm is where you're going to get your band of heaviest snowfall. I think it ranges from Columbia, Missouri, up through Peoria, and then Chicago, and then over toward Detroit. ABC News meteorologist Jeff Smith. An inmate serving life as the primary suspect in the strangulation death of a Washington State corrections officer. Tracy Thompson is with the Union for Corrections Officers in Washington and says the female guard was found dead in the chapel of the prison. She says the woman was working alone. We have been fighting over these staffing levels for a long time and I have a pending lawsuit against the state over safety issues. Screen Actors Guild's honored its own. The King's Speech won for overall cast with Best Actor for Colin Firth. Best Actress went to Natalie Portman for Black Swan. And co-stars Christian Bale and Melissa Leo from The Fighters swept the supporting actor honors. You're listening to ABC News. Mortgages should be illegal because you're getting robbed every month. For example, if you have a typical $200,000 30-year mortgage, you're going to end up paying over $400,000 after interest. That's almost a quarter of a million dollars that you could be putting into your pocket instead of the bank's. I want to send you a powerful free CD to show you how. Hi, I'm John Commuta, creator of the Transforming Debt into Wealth System. My proven system can eliminate your mortgage and all your other debts using just the money you already make. That's right, no credit card debt, no car payment, no mortgage. It's easy, it works. I will be able to pay off my house in approximately two and a half years on a 30-year mortgage. Stop getting robbed of your money and your future. Call now and I'll rush you a free CD today. Call 1-800-933-0939 for your free seed. The call system works. The idea was to make it as easy enough, well, for a child to figure it out, and they do. The easiest way to learn a new language that will give you a free demo. To get your free demo from Rosetta Stone, call now. 1-800-336-1989. 1-800-336-1989. 1-800-336-1989. I'm Larry Jacobs. ABC News. We have an obesity epidemic in this country. And what does that do? Jumpstart your day with the I-Man. Half of the food that they serve in all of these fast food restaurants and this, all of this processed food is can- full of cancer-causing ingredients and is solely responsible for the hideous diet for most Americans for the out-of-control, catastrophic, spiraling health care costs. i in the morning. 6 to 10 on 77 WABC. Here we are in our flagship studios, WABC in New York, and the uh, one and only Stephen A. Smith is Roman. What are you doing, Roman, the halls here? Sean Hannity. You miss me when I'm not around. We all know this. You and uh, the great one. We understand. We agree with what we agree with. We don't with what we don't. But you are not reasonable. I said he gave a good speech in, in Tucson. Really? You said that? I said I didn't believe a word of it, but I said it was. <laughs> yeah. Sean Hannity. Afternoons at 3 on 77 WABC. John Bachelor is now on Twitter. Follow him at twitter.com slash bachelor show. I'm John Bachelor. This is the John Bachelor Show. Cairo, Cairo and social media. Certainly social media dominating the Academy Awards conversations this year. But social media in Cairo means the internet and means the ability to use Facebook and Twitter in order to spread the word and to communicate. Uh, to colleagues, to friends, and to recruit for the uprising, the turmoil, uh, in protest of the Mubarak government. Mike Giglio of Newsweek International, following the story very carefully over many weeks, is here to explain where social media is right now in Cairo and where it can go, given the ability of the government to shut down the Internet. Mike, a very good evening to you. Thank you for this. Right now, what is the status of the Internet, to your knowledge, in Cairo. Right now, the status is blocked, as far as I know, and the, uh, the Facebook pages that have been driving all this have not been posting since Thursday night. Thursday night. All right, let's talk about the Facebook pages. One significant Facebook page is from something called April 6th Movement. Is that correct? That's one of them, yep. All right. The uh, t- Telegraph used a WikiLeaks document last week 
that pointed to the April 6th movement and a young Egyptian who traveled to the United States in December of 2008 was said to meet with members of Congress, perhaps members of the administration, and then return to Egypt. Uh, is that a suggesting that social media in Cairo is linked in some fashion to U.S. operations? I don't know that it's linked to U.S. operations. I, I think he was really just coming to try and spread his own message of what needed to happen in Egypt. That was December of 2008, though. A lot's happened since then. Do we have any reason to believe that the social media page that April 6th has put up is coordinated with any U.S. and uh, any apparatus in the United States government? I, I, we really don't. I, I just got off the phone with the activist you're talking about, and uh, he, he did not suggest anything like that. Uh, do we know his status? I mean, he traveled to the United States. He traveled back to Egypt. Do we have any bona fides from him? Telegraph chose not to use his name. We will not use it here. But what do we know about his uh, his profile? Well, I can tell you right now, he was. Uh, it seemed like he was targeted, at least according to him, um, after the two... His name for a martyr from last June. Those are the two websites. Which, That's right. Which one is given credit for calling the rally on Friday? I mean, if you talk to people, everybody's careful to, to mention, including al-Shahid, that this has been a group movement. Um, and they, 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 want, they want it to be known that there's no true leader. But I think most people have been looking to the al-Shahid Facebook page. And he gets a lot of credibility because he is anonymous. Um, and people don't feel like he has any kind of overarching goals. And he's vowed to remain anonymous uh, even if Mubarak falls. And so people kind of lend some sort of credibility where... Uh, you know, I think it gets more people to sign on and pay attention. I agree with you. Now, this is an Arabic site only, or does he use many languages? It's in Arabic, mostly. And the same for the April 6th. Is that Arabic? That's right. Yeah. Mike, uh, right now, in your experience, the way that this is working, are there other Facebook people coming in on this? Have we heard any other indication from outside in the diaspora? Are there Egyptians and Islam uh, and people from Islam all over the world? I know within within Egypt, I, I've spoken to some, some Facebook activists that are, are joining the push. Like I said, it's a collection of people. Those are just the two main sites. Right. And so there are other sites growing now. That's right. Uh, and have they been able to use other social media pages? I mean, for example, I use TweetDeck a lot uh, because that's the way I follow the news. Is Twitter and TweetDeck useful to them? It seems like it was when, when they were on the ground just in communicating uh, what was going on in the streets. And, you know, people would, would call in to their friends who had stayed at home for whatever reason and have them post to Facebook and Twitter, and they were, they were trying to find all different ways to get the message out. Finally, Mike, uh, this is Mike Giglio of Newsweek International. You're posting about all this next. When next? When should we look for your piece, Mike? There's going to be a sort of an in-depth profile of this anonymous administrator of the uh, called El Shahid tomorrow morning on Newsweek. Monday, uh, Monday, the 31st of January, Newsweek, uh, Newsweek International has a website. Mike Giglio is the author. Two fi Facebook pages, one by Al Shahid, the other by the April 6th movement. I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. Council 77 WABC. I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. You will all recall the events of June 2009 the failed election for president in Iran, the usurpation of power of governance by the Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps working at the pest of the usurper himself, Ahmadinejad, a stolen election, protests in the streets of Tehran, hundreds of thousands of young people using the internet until it was taken down by the government. Sound familiar? Yes, strikingly parallel to the events we're watching in Cairo, except for back then, President Obama, when asked in a press conference about these events, including the shooting down, the murder of a young woman that we could all see on, uh, on video on YouTube, the president did not comment. Now, the events in Cairo, the president is commenting a lot, often, and calling for what looks to be regime change. Riza Khalili, a pseudonym, is a man who has a book out, A Time to Betray, about his years working for for and with the people of Iran in order to provide to the United States and other Western powers a very good and accurate information about the Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps, especially their nuclear weapons ambition. Riza, striking, isn't it, to watch Cairo and the Obama administration's response compared to the silence, the muted, ambiguous nothingness of June of 2009. 
Uh, yes, uh, thanks so much for having me. Uh, yes, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, really surprising how the administration reacted to the uprising in Iran and the aspiration of Iranian people for freedom where they remain quiet and they continued negotiation with this terrorist regime through uh, uh, back channels. Uh, being delusional that they can come to an agreement on the uh, nuclear uh, program, uh, which obviously we know it has now failed. And now uh, they've been, uh, uh, just like a deer, they've been caught in the headlights. Uh, they don't know what to do. And uh, they're betting their chips on El Barade, uh, which is, in my opinion, uh, another big mistake like when Carter called Khomeini a man of God and uh, prepared uh, the transition from the Shah's regime to, to Khomeini's rulership. Mahmoud al Baradei won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2005 as president of the IAEA, an organization that, under his command, did almost nothing to stop the Iranian nuclear weapons program, in fact misled or deliberately skipped out, uh, skipped over on facts we know to be true of the intention of Iran to go underground to use military facilities. I'm struck by Mahmoud al baradei now uh, putting himself forward as an opposition candidate in Cairo. He's an Egyptian, yes, but he's also making it very clear that he speaks for the Muslim Brothers. What does that tell you, Lisa? But uh, you better go back and see uh, how he cooperated with the Iranian regime in, in delay of inspection, in, in coming out with any stronger border resolution uh, demanding more visibility on the Iranian nuclear program. Actually, in October of 2009, um, El Barade called Israel the number one threat to the Middle East. Uh, because of its nuclear capabilities during a meeting with uh, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, the Iranian president. Um, he has had close ties, and there are accusations that he was sent back to Egypt to run for presidency uh, with Iranian funds exceeding $7 million, uh, which was arranged in a meeting in Bucharest. And, and so um, his ties,